New archaeological discoveries have some anthropologists asking, did the first early modern humans come out of the Middle East and not Africa? A handful of fossilized teeth found in Israel's Kesem Cave, described in the American Journal of Physical Anthropology, and attributed to 400,000-year-old members of our own species, are said to rewrite the story of human evolution. This discovery doubles the antiquity of Homo sapiens, and identify a new point of origin for our species, say the discoverers. According to the study, the remains are unquestionably Homo sapiens, and the shapes of the teeth match those of both modern and ancient humans. They also lack features typical of Neanderthals, which lived throughout Eurasia at the time. Other anthropologists have even postulated that these fossils represent the last common ancestor of Neanderthals and modern humans, who survived as a distinct group in Israel until very recently. Consequently, the jaw and teeth point to a long-term occupation of the Middle East by early Homo sapiens. People were coming and going through this land corridor from one continent to another, and it was occupied all the time by different human groups. Once in the region, humans probably encountered and interbred with Neanderthals. Indeed, an ancient DNA study suggested interbreeding had occurred before 200,000 years ago. Wetter climates could have drawn humans into the Middle East, but long dry spells mean that the region was probably more often a boulevard of broken dreams than a stable haven for early humans, according to one anthropologist. Thus, the fossil mandible could indicate that Israel and the rest of the Arabian Peninsula were part of a larger region in which Homo sapiens evolved. We tend to think of Israel as part of Asia for geopolitical reasons, but it is really a transition zone between North Africa and Western Asia. Plenty of Afro-Arabian animals live there, or did so until recently, including leopards, lions and zebras. Maybe Homo sapiens is just another such Afro-Arabian species. Researchers originally thought that Homo sapiens emerged in East Africa 100,000 years ago, then moved out to populate the rest of the world. Until discoveries in the past decade countered that story, scientists thought that a small group left Africa some 60,000 years ago. If so, it would mean that signs of earlier travels, including 80,000 to 120,000-year-old skulls and other remains from Israel, uncovered in the 1920s and 1930s, were from failed migrations out of Africa. It was not until the 1950s that Africa was recognized as the place of origin for the human family. And by the waning years of the 20th century a combination of genetic and paleontological techniques allowed scientists to confirm that our own peculiar species originated in Africa. According to the current consensus of data, anatomically modern representatives of Homo sapiens originated in Africa about 200,000 years ago, and populations of our species began to disperse out of Africa by about 70,000 years ago. However, the origin of our species can still be traced to Africa, but things were not as simple as our species replacing populations of other humans across the globe one by one until we were the last hominin standing. The conclusions derived from the Kesem cave fossils have further upset these matters. If Homo sapiens existed in Israel by 400,000 years ago then there might have been an earlier dispersal from Africa which fizzled out, or, our species might have even originated in Israel. I wanted to tell you about the sponsor of this video, NordVPN. What is a VPN? VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, a service that protects your internet connection and privacy online. I personally use NordVPN anytime I am using a public Wi-Fi network to protect from hackers. No one likes to be watched or tracked, even if they have nothing to hide. That's why it's important you step up your privacy game. When you're browsing through a VPN, your traffic is encrypted so no one can see what you do online. VPN is used to secure your connection on public Wi-Fi, so you can browse in full privacy. Hackers have many methods to steal your data on public hotspots, but with a VPN your online traffic is invisible to them. So when you choose a VPN service, make sure they don't make any compromises. There's no point in having unbreakable encryption if every website takes ages to load. That's why you need to click the link in the description and choose NordVPN. The Kesem cave teeth were found in two sets. 
one set, found lower down in the cave layers, consisted of a lower canine and two lower premolars. The second set, from a geologically younger part of the cave, consisted of an upper second incisor, canine, and third molar, in addition to two milk teeth, with the milk teeth obviously representing a juvenile individual. The archaeologists discovered the jaw fragment in 2002, in Mislia Cave, the highest of Mount Carmel's caves. It is just a few miles away from the school cave, one of the sites where 80,000 to 120,000 year old remains were found in the 1920s and 1930s. Using several different methods, the team estimated the jaw and teeth to be 177,000 to 194,000 years old. Exact dates for these two levels of the cave are difficult to determine. The authors of the study proposed that the older set represents people who occupied the cave between 300,000 and 400,000 years ago, while the bearers of the more recent sets occupied the cave between 200,000 and 300,000 years ago. But what sort of human, or humans, do these teeth represent? When compared to the teeth of Neanderthals and prehistoric Homo sapiens, the Kesem cave teeth consistently fell at the overlap of variation between the groups, as seen in this chart. Indeed, both the Neanderthals and prehistoric human populations exhibit a significant amount of variation in tooth shape, making the task of identifying the owners of the Kesem teeth extremely difficult. The graphs show the spread of variation in human teeth, based upon their dimensions from front to back and side to side. But there is a great degree of overlap between Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens, in terms of these parameters. The only teeth that appear to group more closely with modern humans are the geologically older lower premolars, and even those fell along the border of Neanderthal variation. Nor were the anatomical details of the teeth especially helpful in solving this case. The Kesem cave teeth are generally Neanderthal-like but lack some of the features thought to definitively characterize Neanderthals. Instead, the authors prefer to associate the Kesem cave teeth with the school Kafzeh hominins. These fossils are prehistoric humans from other cave sites in Israel, dated between about 80,000 and 120,000 years ago. Although known from much more complete material, these individuals have variously been described as part of an early migration of Homo sapiens out of Africa, hybrids between our lineage and Neanderthals, and a unique type of extinct human. But since we cannot confidently identify these humans, the proposal that the Kesem cave humans may have been akin to the geologically younger school Kafza individuals does not tell us very much at all. Citing the resemblance of the Kesem teeth to those of the school Kafza hominins, and the characteristic nature of the stone tools found at these sites, the authors favor the idea that the prehistoric inhabitants of Israel were part of an isolated pocket of human evolution. The questions of what species these humans belonged, how they got there, and what happened to them, however, are left unresolved. If you're not yet a subscriber, please do me a favor and click that big red button now, so you don't miss any groundbreaking content. Despite being geologically younger, the teeth from the upper Kesem cave layers have more in common with lineages of archaic humans, than the older teeth. This difference may indicate that this older group of humans, whether a unique population, subspecies, or species, was eventually replaced sometime after 300,000 years ago. Given that the teeth in each set are from different parts of the jaw, and cannot be directly compared, this hypothesis is somewhat tenuous. A better sampling of teeth would be needed to be sure, especially given the wide range of variation shown among the teeth. Therefore, the identity of the Kesem cave humans remains unclear, as do their origins. Even if they turn out to be early members of Homo sapiens, this does not automatically mean that our species evolved in Israel, as the discoverers speculate. Instead, such a conclusion would raise several alternative scenarios, including the possibility that there are as yet undiscovered deposits of early Homo sapiens fossils in Africa, which document an earlier dispersal from Africa, distinct from the one around 70,000 years ago. For now though the identity of the Kesem cave humans cannot be conclusively determined. If they teach us anything, the Kesem cave teeth remind us how much remains to be discovered about human evolution during the past 500,000 years.
multiple human lineages left Africa and dispersed throughout Europe and Asia, and a combination of fossil and genetic data has thrown significant support to the notion that many of these disparate populations interacted rather intimately with each other. In truth, we are only just beginning to understand how this happened, and there are many specimens, like the Kesem cave teeth and schooled Kafsa specimens, which will remain suspended in the realm of scientific uncertainty, until further discoveries provide us with the proper context to understand them. These complementary discoveries will require years or decades of additional work, but anyone even superficially familiar with the process of science will not be surprised by this. It has only been a century and a half since human prehistory was even regarded as a reality. There is still much work to be done and many amazing discoveries yet to be made. Nonetheless, recent discoveries have muddied that simple narrative. Some Homo sapiens fossils from Morocco that are older than 300,000 years, have raised the possibility that humans evolved earlier and perhaps elsewhere in Africa. Teeth from southern China, hint at long-distance migration some 120,000 years ago. And genome studies have sown even more confusion, with some comparisons of global populations pointing to just one human migration from Africa, and others suggesting multiple waves. Given these new discoveries, we will have to re-examine how we define our species, and our relationship to extinct lineages like the Neanderthals and Denisovans. At the moment, it is unclear whether these lineages should be classified as separate species, as subspecies of Homo sapiens, or in some other category. Since the reality of human prehistory was recognized by Charles Darwin, the time and place of our origins has been one of the most contentious subjects in anthropology. The details of human evolution were almost entirely unknown during the latter half of the 19th century. Determining whether the remains of prehistoric humans represented ancestors, new species, or ancient cousins was difficult. The truth of the matter is that the identity of these humans remains unresolved. Thanks for watching. Please check out these other videos or join us in the comments section.